the Gulf Islands. I just love the, uh, the area and I started to think maybe this is where I should be looking. I've been interested as long as I can remember in international development work. One of the um, downsides, of course, of working in third world developing countries is the images that will always stay in my mind. I'd like to be able to come home and roost, refresh, rejuvenate my soul. Where my home's going to be, I don't know. I noticed that uh, there was a sign that said Gulf Islands, so I asked the uh, uh, I flagged over one of the parking lot attendants and I said, what is this Gulf Islands thing? And he says, oh, he says, nothing much. He says, it's uh, just a bunch of loggers and fishermen and Indians and hippies out there. So I said, wow, that sounds pretty cool. And he said, uh, I said, we like islands. And he said, uh, you want to go? And I said, yeah. So he wiggled me out of the Victoria lineup and put me in the Galliano lineup. After three days on Galliana, we decided that that it, it was a national park that, that the Canadians didn't know it was a park yet, so we knew it was a park. So we thought it would be nice if we lived here for a couple of years before they threw everybody out and made a national park out of it. I was looking to solve some of my issues in the, living in the city, what with it being very expensive to live there and uh, just having difficulties with life. And I just felt that I really needed to get out in nature and find a retreat space, a place to retreat in, into nature and relax and recharge my batteries. So that's what I was looking for when I came here. Oh, after 20 years, I decided I was on the wrong side of the window. You know, I was looking outside and it was beautiful, clear skies and sun shining and wind blowing. And I was in a workshop that was covered with dust. And uh, I thought, wow. I need to get on the other side of this dusty window. So I decided to open a lodge and uh, start a kayaking business and, uh, um, and, and sailing charter business. I was a graphic designer and commercial artist and cartoonist and I did that for years and I really enjoyed it. But after a while, I, this, the intensity of the city and the speed of the lifestyle got to me. Mm -hmm. I thought, I want a quieter life. And here you can kind of take it a little bit slower, but you still have to run around a lot because that's what I noticed after spending the winter here was that everybody is on the move all the time to make sure that they can accomplish something, but it, it's kind of uh, subtle how it's done here. When I came here I thought this is just going to be my country retreat and I'll, you know, come here on weekends. and recharge my batteries and go back to the city. But gradually, the, more, the longer I spent here, the more I fell in love with the lifestyle. It's very beautiful with all the green. Just to be able to step out my door every morning into nature, to hear the birds, to feed the birds, to look at the water, to just to, you know, to be able to look up and see the moon instead of buildings. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just that would be the most important thing. The moon will cast a shadow on you on the ground and you can see all the stars and the trees are all kind of going up into the sky like that. And it's quite beautiful. Well, just take a look around, you know, listen to the birds, uh, look at the view, um, try to find my neighbors. Beauty. Yeah, I've, I've just taken, you know, a slow, full circle in my life, and I feel like I've come home by, by arriving here. As soon as I drove off the ferry, the first moment I came here, I just thought, oh my God, I'm at home. It was just, it was a very strong feeling. So, it feels wonderful. I'm just thrilled to be here. Every single time I come back to the island, it's a deep sigh of relief.